Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. In this episode I'm going to be talking about life without parole. Now life without parole was brought out in 1983 and it was reserved for the most heinous of crimes and there has been some 100 prisoners handed this sentence since it was brought into circulation. But currently there's about 70 still serving that sentence and the one I'm going to be talking about today is Mark Fellows. Now, a lot of you will be familiar with the name, or you probably will be more familiar with the person or one of the people that he killed, who was Paul Massey. Now, as you all probably would have heard from the other crime channels or in the news, um, if you're following that sort of stuff, Paul Massey was a gangland figure from Salford, and he was very very well known especially throughout the system because Paul Massey had spent a lot of time in prison and anybody who had been in more so the high security prisons over the past 20 years will know exactly who Paul Massey is. Now Mark Fellows is serving life without parole for the murder of Paul Massey and John Kinsella. Now I've got all the Details up in front of us on my computer here, so I will be going over a few things just so I get the facts right. But Mark Fellows was actually nicknamed the Iceman, and Mark Fellows was a hitman, an underworld hitman, who was born on the 5th of September 1980. He's an English hitman convicted of the murders of John Kinsella and Paul Massey. Rival enforcers to the anti air team criminal network. At the time of his conviction, he was one of only 70 prisoners sentenced to a whole life term. So, Fellows lived in Warrington but was originally from Salford. And this is when the murders took place. So, on the 26th of July 2015, Massey was shot dead outside his home on Manchester Road, Clifton, by a lone gunman. The killer was reported to have been wearing military-style fatigues and carried a weapon similar to a submachine gun. Greater Manchester Police offered a £50,000 reward for information leading to the killer. John Kinsella was shot dead on the 5th of May 2018 near St Helens, Lingwear, in Rain Hill as he walked with his pregnant partner, Wendy Owen. The killers used encrypted Encro Chad handsets to coordinate the murder. So Paul Massey and John Kinsella were friends. <clears throat> and it was three years after Paul Massey's murder, Mark Fellows still went unnoticed. Although he was pulled in and questioned a few different times on the murder, he was never prosecuted. But when they did finally get him, he was actually convicted through his Fitbit watch. Because, because there was no evidence or there was nothing really linking him to the case apart from hearsay and people putting his name forward saying it was him. It was actually a Garmin fitness watch which has a GPS function on it. And this watch tracked Fellows' his location from his house and it showed that he had travelled to a, to a field opposite Massey's home before the shooting took place and that is what subsequently convicted him at trial that watch if it wasn't for that watch he probably never would have been caught so I'll just go through a little bit about who Paul Massey was just for the viewers that have never heard this story before because I know a lot of viewers or new to the channel and the majority of people or the majority of my viewers and subscribers have never been to prison and they've never been involved in the criminal lifestyle but they do like to hear which is quite intriguing and it's quite appealing to people they like to hear these sort of stories even though they've never been involved in that sort of lifestyle people do like to hear these type of stories but it just goes to show when you live in that lifestyle, as you'll always, as you'll have heard before previously, if you want to live the gangster lifestyle, it's only going to end two ways. You're either going to end up in prison for the rest of your life, or you're going to end up dead. 
And this is what's happened here between these three gangsters. Two of them are dead, and one of them is in prison for the rest of his life, life without parole, never to be released again. And that is what happens when you're in that sort of lifestyle. Prison or dead. So Paul Massey was born on the 7th of January, 1960. He was an English organised crime figure and sulphur-based businessman. Massey was born in Audsall, Salford, England. He was one of six children of Rose Massey and John Massey. When Massey was 12, he was arrested for criminal damage and sent to an approved school. In the 1990s, Massey established several security companies. Th through these businesses, Damien Noonan, he and his gang were able to control the doors of several Manchester area nightclubs. In 1999, Massey was sentenced to 14 years in prison for stabbing a man in the groin. Several media outlets reported that Massey served an important mediator between rival organised crime firms in Greater Manchester. At the time of his death, the regional organised crime squad was investigating Massey over allegations of money laundering. So when I've mentioned about Massey going to prison, obviously when he got his 14 year sentence in 1999, this is probably when he ended up in the high security prisons. Now, when I was in HMP Franklin High Security Prison, the majority of people that I met in there that had been in for a long time, I'm talking about the long termers, that had been in for a long stretch of time, some of them that had been in for nearly 20 years, they all spoke highly of Massey. Massey was well known throughout the prison system, <clears throat> as well as the criminal organisation on the outside of the prison. And like I said, everyone had good words to say about Massey, even though he was involved in that lifestyle, in the criminal fraternity. He was well liked and well respected, apart from obviously the likes of Mark Fellows and his firm, who they were obviously arch rivals, and this is how he ended up getting killed. So, where are we at now? So, the authorities in Manchester area feared an escalation in gang violence relating to Massey's death. Manchester police believe that the shooting of a 29 year old woman and her seven year old son was linked to retribution for the Massey killing. From January to December 2015, there were 19 shootings in Salford. On the 1st of June 2018, Fellows was charged with Massey's murder and also that of Massey's close friend, Liverpool gangster John Kinsella. So, it goes on to say here, Massey had five children and eight grandchildren at the time of his death. Massey was given the nickname Mr Big by City Councillor Joe Burrows during a meeting in 1992 held to address ongoing civil disturbances in Salford. So that is Massey, and that's given like a brief description of who Massey was and where he was born. And we'll do the same now for John Kinsella, who was a close friend of Paul Massey. So here it says, John Kinsella was an English criminal from Everton, Liverpool. He was shot dead on the May the 18th by killers using encrypted Encro chat handsets. He was an expert in judo and jiu-jitsu, uh, jiu sorry, and was originally from Everton. He was a criminal associate of gangster Paul Massey and a pallbearer at his funeral. In 1991, Kinsella was sentenced at Liverpool Concord to nine years imprisonment for attempted robbery and carrying a firearm with intent to commit an offence. In 2006, he was involved in a robbery in Grantham, Lincolnshire, and was put on trial for it in 2008. During the trial, the jury was read a letter, letter from the father of Stephen Gerrard saying that Kinsella had stopped his son from being threatened by a criminal. George Bromley Jr., known as the Psycho, in 2001. When during the trial, Kinsella was allowed into the court, court grounds during a lunch break, he absconded. He was convicted in his absence and sentenced to 14 years. He was subsequently arrested in February 2009. Kinsella's death was the result of a feud between, sorry, when, when a, a gang feud began in 2015, between two rival criminal organisations in Salford. One gang headed by Michael Carroll had Mark Fellows and Stephen Boyle as members. 
The rival gang said to be headed by Stephen Britton called itself the Air Team. Kinsella and Massey were associated with that gang. <clears throat> Kinsella was shot dead on the 5th of May 2018 near St Helens Linkway in Rainhill. Fellows was found guilty of the murders of Kinsella and Massey in 2019. Stephen Boyle was convicted of murder for his part of acting as a spotter in the murder of John Kinsella. It was later revealed during the investigation that the murder of Kinsella was organised by means of EncroChat devices. Now for the viewers that don't know what the EncroChat is, it's the EncroChat phones that criminals thought they could use without being detected. Now these phones were used for a number of years before they were broken or the code for the encryption was broken into by the police and the police had information on every single person that had these EncroChat phones and they could get all the details up on the phone what the criminals thought was deleted and removed forever but it was used to convict a lot of criminals. Now John Kinsella along with Paul Massey was very well respected and liked in his area and as you could quite imagine Mark Fellows when he went to prison he had a hit put out on him and the hit was for I think it was somewhere it said round about 100 grand or 150 grand for whoever got a hold of Mark Fellows in prison. Now again Mark Fellows had his own firm and he was probably respected in his little fraternity or his criminal world and it goes without saying he's a dangerous man obviously killing two people and getting life without parole but when you put someone like this in prison in amongst people that have served time with Paul Massey who was respected throughout the criminal world especially in prison because a lot of people are still in prison who was in prison with Paul Massey at the time and a lot of people were exact or wanting to exact revenge and that's exactly what happened because in 2019 I think it was whilst he was in Whitemore prison two seconds while I just get this up just to make sure because he got attacked in two separate prisons Yeah, where we at? So it was a 150 grand contract was reportedly placed on Fellows' life and he was slashed across the face by another inmate while at the high security HMP Whitemore Prison in Cambridgeshire shortly after he started his sentence. So it wasn't long after his sentence he got slashed and um, supposedly he was airlifted to hospital so it must have been quite uh, dear, well quite severe if he got airlifted to hospital two seconds people just while I get these up because like I say I want to get the deals correct because if you just go over it and read it and then go back you might miss things out and people will pick you up on it so uh, where's the other one sorry just trying to find this one he got attacked again in HMP Wakefield I believe it was because he was in Whitemore where he got attacked on the first time and then he got sent to HMP Wakefield where he was attacked again but I don't think that was as serious as the first time where's that? I want to see his letters so it says here this was in 2021 when Kinsella, uh, when Mark Fellows has been writing to fellow prisoners telling them about the attacks. The letters have actually been intercepted and they've probably, because these images what I'm reading up here on the computer, <clears throat> it's got screenshots of letters that Massey has sent, uh, sorry, that Mark Fellows has sent to another prisoner and I think what's happened here is because this has been sent to the Manchester Evening News so 
the only way for these letters to get there when this prisoner is trying to send these letters to another prisoner, one of the screws must have had a camera and they've been taking pictures of mass of um of Kinsella's letters. Excuse me, I'm getting mixed up with all this here. With Mark Fellows's letters, so they must have took pictures of them and sent them to the to the Manchester Evening News. So in the letters, Fellows admits that he and that he stalked Massey. He even thought about shooting a policeman who turned up at the infamous businessman's home the night before the assassination. When he struck, Fellows says he wore a fake beard disguise. He described Massey as a bully and boasts of playing games with him as he killed him by first shooting at his feet and forcing him to dodge bullets. Now this is all what's been written in the letters and this is what the, the MEN is going on to talk about. Fellows boasts that he is ready to kill again while behind bars if anyone else tries to exact revenge for the two cold-blooded assassins for which he was caged because he can't get no extra time. Obviously when you're serving life without parole if you go on to kill again, you can't get you can't get another life sentence, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't make no difference because you've never been released. You'll get put on units, you'll get put down the blocks for years, but you can't get any extra time. And this is what makes these type of prisoners even more dangerous. Even though you've still got the people like that are chancing attacks that are coming up behind them, because that's what it says in these ones, that they come up behind um, Mark Fellows and slashed them from behind, which is normally the case in prison. When someone puts a hit out on another person, they don't go up and front them face to face. It's always a sly attack, either from behind or with something else. So he goes on to say in the letters, I had an idea that I would get whole life. I said to my solicitor about it, he said maybe 40 rec, but I knew it more than that. That's why I'm not shocked about just getting on with it. It only means I can kill again if people want to try things. In the letters, Fellows admits that the newspapers, particularly the, NE, the MEN, were doing my head in by suggesting he had been overpowered when he was slashed across the face in prison not long after he'd been sentenced. He brands this suggestion bullshit, writing, the lad that tried to cut my face ran up behind me and cut my face. Not a very good job. So I grabbed him because he tried to run away he done it, and I started to punch his head in. The only reason I had to stop was because he mucked off. Put his hands up with the blade in it, and I punched the blade in his hand and damaged my hand and couldn't carry on using my hand. If I didn't damage my hand, then I would have took the blade off him and used it on him. He describes the culprit as an amateur who didn't do a good job. Kin Fellows also criticises Wendy Owen, the partner of Massey's good friend and Merseyside gangland enforcer John Kinsella. Fellows shot Kinsella, blah, 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 I've just read all that. Miss Owen was walking her dogs with Kinsella when Fellows rode up on the pier on a mountain bike and then gunned him down close to an M62 motorway roundabout in Rainhill. The assassin admits in his letters he was irked at Miss Owen's suggestions in the trial that she had heard the sound of fellows breaking on his mountain bike moments before the murder and that he had also shot at her. She wasn't hit. <clears throat> Detailing the brutal murder, fellows writes, her and Kinsella heard nothing. Only time she knew about it was when Kinsella was crying on the floor. So I put another one in him to shut him up. Then I told Wendy to empty his pockets to, to, to make it look like a robbery, but she ran off. So I went over to him and put two in his head. With Massey, he got out from his car. I was on the other side of the road. He seen me, so I shot at him across the road, missed him. When I went over, he was behind the bins, so I was playing games with him, like they do in the cowboy films, shooting at their feet. That's why he got shot in the foot. That's why there's so many bullets there, and he tried to make it to his front door, so I put one in his chest, and he hit the floor out cold. I didn't want to get too close and stood back and shot four times at his head but missed and my clip ran out so I made my way home. If I would have got close like Kinsella I would have hit his head and he wouldn't be able to make phone calls but at least he's still dead. Referring to Massey he, he adds later if you're a bully and you're always getting the end you always get it in the end and when you do it to the wrong people 
who don't care like me. Fellow says that instead of pursuing him for the murders of Massey and Kinsella, the police should have been happy when they were gone. And he pours scorn on the prosecution suggestion during the trial that he killed Massey for money. £10,000 was found in Fellows' home when police searched it after he shot himself. What's this? After he, he was shot himself in the weeks after Massey had been gunned down. The money was from drug dealing and not for gunland hit, he claims. If I was going to kill someone for money, it wouldn't be for 10k or 50k, more like 1 million. It would, it would have to be worth it to me and my family because if they get caught, I wouldn't be there for my family, he says. In another letter, he bemoans that he's about to turn 40 and jokes he could reach 100 inside. I hope cancer soon so I don't see these walls for a long time. Ha ha. And this is again all that's wrote in the letters. He said it would be mad watching his kids growing up on the outside, adding... But fuck it, I should be dead. They tried twice, but failed. Fellows appears to take delight in describing the details of how he stalked Paul Massey for days and claims he even considered killing a police officer. So that just goes to show of reading that, and these are legit letters <coughs> from inside the prison, how cold-blooded Mark Fellows is. But again, he's been caught, he's, had, he's been found guilty, he knows his fate, he's never been released from prison. So now he's playing up to it and acting this way because he knows he's never going to be released. Doesn't matter if he's trying to put appeals in or anything, killing two people, especially shooting them dead. The only sentence you're going to get is life without parole and you will not be getting anything on appeal. Yeah, just read it one a little bit more here. I shouldn't have listened to that person about not... To, oh, sorry. Fellows describes his assassination of Massey in 2015 as a good job, but expresses regret on not shooting Miss Owen during the 2018 shooting of Kinsella, suggesting he would have got away with both murders had he also killed her. I shouldn't have listened to that person about not touching her. I should have gone with my gut and I wouldn't have been here. When I got shot in 2015, I should be dead, so at least my family are not going to my grave. He writes without naming that person. So obviously after the killing of Massey in 2015, Fellows was attacked himself and he was shot. An attempt was made on his life, but obviously he made it and he didn't die. And that's when he went on to afterwards kin kill Kinsella three years later. But again, this is just another mad, crazy story about what goes on in the underworld. And it just goes to show, like I mentioned previously, I mentioned earlier, it only going to end two ways if you're in that lifestyle. You're going to end up dead yourself or you're going to end up in prison for the rest of your life. But again, like he's mentioned, he said in his letters, he's got nothing to lose. And another prisoner, Gary Vinter, he's on doing the same thing in prison. He's attempting to kill other inmates and he's serving life without parole. I've done a video on him previously. If you go back and have a look or go to my playlist section and have a look at life without parole because every prisoner that has ever been given life without parole, I will be covering every case. And I think up till now I've covered about 18 or 19, round about that. But I will be covering 100 cases. I will try and get more uploaded every week or every other week because... There's still 70 still serving the sentence. The other 30 have either died or won their appeals when they've appealed against the sentence. And another one I've done a video on him was David Bieber, the cop killer, the American who came over here and he was there uh, on Boxing Day. He shot the cop at dead, point, point blank range, shot him dead. And he was given life without parole, but he went on to win his appeal against the sentence. And he was handed, I think it was around about a 40, 40 year minimum term. But um, yes, people, if you are enjoying the content, remember to comment, like, and subscribe. But if you can go down, double check to make sure that you are subscribed because a lot of me viewers are still not subscribed to my channel. It's free of charge to subscribe. And if you are wanting some exclusive content and you want to join me Discord channel, 
go down and click me link for me Patreon and you can become a member of me Patreon channel to support the channel. Because a lot of me videos do not get monetized because of the topics. Now I'm not sure whether this one will or not up until I upload the video. But because of the nature of what's been mentioned in the video, sometimes it doesn't get monetized. And if you go down and give a little click on the Patreon and support the channel, it goes a long way. And I can get more videos done, make it a bit more worthwhile and try and get some better podcast guests on. But um, I'll leave that one there for now, people. Hopefully you did enjoy that one. I've got a load more coming up soon. So click that notification bell so you don't miss another video. Take care, everyone. Peace out.